If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, we'll be in the book of Ruth, uh, chapter number one. And uh, I had uh, just, you know, the problem with being retired, you have too much time to think. <laughs> so I'm going to go find me a job. So I quit thinking. <laughs> and uh, But uh, I want to read to you... Uh, just one verse, verse number 12. <clears throat> and uh, all of you know this story. It seems like an odd verse, but I want to just give you what's on my heart. It says, Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons... It's kind of an odd verse, but I want to just look at one word. And the reason I'm choosing this scripture is this is the first place in the Bible that this word hope is used. And when you look around, there seems to be no hope. And I would say a lot of people have a false hope. Uh, <clears throat> the world, and even in church, people are putting their uh, their thoughts and all of their dreams and hopes on things and finance and uh, you know even people you know uh, uh, there's a sign right out here that says thank God for Donald Trump I'm like it said God Almighty is what it says I know you've seen it you drive up here you got to see that sign and I want to say that's stupid right. it really is because I'm not putting my trust in him right. if you think he's godly you, you've got room upstairs to rent. Amen. <laughs> and so, uh, I, 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 we are the only people that have hope. You know, and what I, just in my studies of this word, I found some things that I thought rather odd. First of all, this is the first time the word is used in the Bible, and Ruth is the eighth book of the Bible. And eight in the Bible is New Beginnings. It's a new start. You know, people that get saved, it's a new beginning. It's hope. You know, the first five books of the Bible are associated with the law, and there's evidently no, book, no, no hope in the law. And you know, another thing that I found odd was the last book of the Bible that Brother Jordan has been teaching some to us about. There is the word hope is not found in there because that's the wrath of God. So you've got the law of God. There's no hope in that. The wrath of God, you have no hope in that. But right in this, in the middle of that, you know, another thing I thought was odd was that in the, the Bible, hope is found 127 times. 127 times God reiterates the hope but the biggest the most times the word hope is found is in the book of Psalms uh, 22 times it's used and it's all it's associated with two things it's associated with God and it's associated with his word you know so there's only really one place that you can get hope and that's from God's word and from God himself but then what I, another thing that I found to be odd about this to me, and I, you know, I just think sometimes, and like I say, it's dangerous. Uh, in the book of Job is the second most times that the word hope is used. And this is what I think it's uh, 16 times you'll find in the book of Job that Job call, talks about hope. And the reason I find this odd, Brother Ray, is that you would think out of 150 chapters in the book of Psalms that hope would be mentioned more than just six more times in a book of Job where there's so much trials and so much tribulations and so much sorrow. But it's evident to me that people that have hope really don't know what they have. We, a lot of times as children of God and as Christians, we do take for granted where we are. Right. 
In other words, our status in life uh, because we have seen the news and we see all the craziness that's going on and, you know, they promote all this wealth. And even in the church, you know, uh, you know send me $20 and I'll, I'll send you a quilt and you can get, you can get blessed by that. Uh, I don't know if that'll work, but go ahead and try it. And if it does, let me know. I'll send them 40 That way I can get twice more than you got. But I'm not putting my hope in that. But it's odd to me that here's a man who's going through the worst time of his life and 16 times he's crying out, help me, let me have some hope. Let me find a place to where I can have some hope. You know, the Bible uh, it, it talks about uh, that, that they're without God and they have no hope. I want to say to you, as Brother Jordan has so vividly talked to us about the conditions of what's going to happen, and I want you to make this personal with you. Those people he's talking about that are going to be here are your loved ones those are my loved ones brother Ray that's your family that they're coming back and they're going to get stung amen they are my family we need to take this thing personal but I want to talk about this uh, this thing of hope and, and, and try to try to show you what a valuable tool I have said and thought about this hope I do not believe that there's ever been a person on planet earth that's committed suicide that had hope I think everybody that comes to the point to where they throw in the towel and they commit suicide, they have lost the one most valuable thing that us as children of God have, and that's hope. They've lost all hope and life is no longer worth living. The sun will never shine again. That is a lie of the devil. The sun will shine again someday. Matter of fact, the sun's always shining. You just have to get up above the clouds to where the sun is shining. And I want to talk to you about this and I, uh, I'll try to be very uh, respectful of time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I want to, first of all, I want to show you, uh, I usually try not to turn a lot because I know that's really hectic when you're trying to, try, trying to keep up with somebody. But in Romans chapter 8, he describes to us what is hope. Now, now look at what the Bible says uh, in chapter 8. It says in verse 22, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption uh, to wit, uh, the redemption of our body, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope, for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. How do God describe hope first of all it's spiritual it is spiritual it's not something that you can grab your hands around but it's as real as anything you can get your hands around I want to tell you why we keep coming we keep coming to church and we keep putting our trust in God because this is the only thing in our hearts and in our lives and in our minds that's worth living for there is no hope outside there there's nothing that you do in the flesh I don't care uh, I want you kids to listen to me if, if you have a dream of doing something or, or getting in a great education do that but do not let that be the foundation in which you build your life upon because it will crumble like all other foundations why? because hope is the only thing you have based upon the spiritual value of life I said, if you want to ruin your children, send them to college. Amen. If I had a kid going off to college, when he got or she got in her vehicle, I would get them by the shirt and I'd say, listen to me, honey. Do not believe anything that those professors say about God because they don't know Him. That's the majority of the truth. Go there and learn whatever trade you're trying to find, but do not let them get into your mind because there's no hope in what they're selling. Right. You need to realize that the, uh, Brother Doug and the people that he has in here are trying to lead your children the right way and lead you the right way. See, hope is spiritual. See, to be spiritual, you have to have the Spirit. Now, verse 20. 4 
says that hope brings salvation. You know, uh, there is nothing else. You know, the word hope, I forgot to give you the definition of hope. The word hope means twisting. It means to twist together. It means to have an expectation, to bind together. Do you know what? how your loved ones will get saved, how you'll see in 2024 someone you love get saved. You'll take this book that tells you that God loves everybody and He's willing to save and by faith you'll take this word and you'll take what God says and you'll believe it and you'll put those two together and you'll bind them together and you'll call their name out before God and if you believe, God will do it. Why? Because God wants them to be saved 10,000 times more than you do. Because he sent his only begotten son to Calvary so that you could see that you could be saved. See, then the next thing that he describes hope is it's not seen. See, we've never seen heaven. I've never seen Jesus, have you? A lot of this stuff that we talk about, it's real, but we haven't seen it. And nobody could convince you. Brother Peter, there's nobody could tell you that Jesus ain't real. There's nobody could stand in you and say, listen here, bud, you've lost your mind. You've wasted your life away. Why don't you get out and have some fun? They couldn't tell you that. You know why? Because the hope that's in your heart is not seen. And it cannot be changed by what everybody around you says. No matter what comes your way, no matter that's what the devil's trying to do. He's trying to upset your life. He's trying to get you to the point to where you throw in the towel. I, I want to tell you, when we went through this problem with our church, the one thing that kept me trying to get back in church and put my heart in the church is I've got a 21-year-old grandson that's lost and on his way to hell. And if I give up, he'll say, well, if, it, if that, Papa couldn't stand in there, there must not be nothing to it. I'm trying to tell you what I'm trying to do. I can't see that there's any value but there is value why because it's unseen what we believe in is unseen you know hope he describes this to us but you know that hope in uh, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 hope has a double it has a twin it's called faith amen it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Again, he says, you can't see faith either. Uh, <clears throat> for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. I know a lot of people are looking for evidence. I've had people say, well, if I can't see it, I can't believe it. <clears throat> That's not true either. You know I know that's not true. <clears throat> they won't get a they won't stick their hand in the light socket with the light out and the and the things on. Can you see electricity? <clears throat> huh? Hey, Amen. What about this faith? The word faith means the ascent of the mind to the truth. It says something existing by itself. <clears throat> I wasn't here when the world was made. But I know who made it. You can't change my mind. You could, you could say all you want to say, do all you want to do, uh, come up with this and that, and I may not be able to argue it with you. But I still believe that God created this mess. He made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Uh, uh, I, you know, our world's being run by a bunch of kooks. If you're not smart enough <clears throat> or wise enough to know who to have a family with, you don't need to be running no you don't need to be in no public office. Uh, you need to be somewhere where they got padding on the walls until you get your head straight on. <clears throat> what is our hope? It's the substance that we get our hands around. It's something that really does exist. It does exist. Huh? It does exist. 
the hope that I have it does exist it goes so far it goes beyond the Milky Way it goes behind, beyond all of the galaxies it goes beyond the, the universes that they don't even know about where God is sitting it's real to me I don't need nobody to try to come up and say well I, uh, I read so and so and this is what he said I don't care what so and so said they said, well, we're going to back up the Bible. You don't have to back up the Bible to me. This book backs itself up. I believe the book, and I believe the person who wrote it, and that's all I need. I don't need no Dead Sea Scrolls. I all that stuff. If you want to have that, you go ahead and help yourself. I've got the King James. I don't need nothing else. Now, you say you're simple-minded. That's okay. I, I am. I, I really am. Me and Ray come from eastern Kentucky. You can't expect a lot. Huh? It's our substance. Look at verse 2. It says, For it, for by it the elders obtained a good report. You know what hope does? It satisfies you. Uh, when the world is falling apart at the seams, when everybody's like a, bunch of, uh, like a bunch of mice when cats are let in the building and they're running everywhere and you just sit there and think, Oh, well, uh, Rhonda, she's a lot of time, bless her heart. She, and I get it, you know, you get upset when you see all the crazy stuff going on. I said, listen here. I said, don't let that throw you. That's just the way it's got to be. Uh, when the homosexuals are running rampant and they think, that's, uh, they think that that is normal, when people think that they can be cats, that's normal. <laughs> I, got, I got bad news for you. That's not normal. Uh Amen. Amen. Uh, if you don't know you're a human being, you need to check in down at the office somewhere because something's wrong with you with what you're... Listen, I'm telling you, the hope that I have, it satisfies me. I don't need nobody else's advice on what I need in this world. People, you know, uh, I, 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 the, my war high used to work. They call me and they said, uh, Ron, we've got... Uh, a little something for your retirement could you come up and get it yes <laughs> on the way out I seen one of the fellas I used to drive with and this is what he said brother Brian he said I've got more money than my kids could ever spend but I'm not going to retire because of the insurance I, I wanted to say but I was nice you my friend or a moron sure. amen do you think that I would get up drive in the sleet and snow work 12 14 hours a day if I had all the money that my grandkids couldn't spend it all hmm? you know what they're saying it don't satisfy right. it, it, it really don't satisfy insurance especially where I work it wasn't that good. Uh, <laughs> I'm just being honest. Let's see. Look in verse 3. Through faith, we understand. You know, what, you know what hope does? It gives you a sound understanding of where you come from, where you are, and where you're going. Hmm? I don't need the newspaper to tell me where I come from. I don't need some scientist who's got uh, all these letters in front or behind his name to tell me, well, i tell you where I believe we came from. No, I don't need that. You know why? Because the hope that I have, the faith that I have in this book right here is all the hope I need. This is the only thing that uh, if I'm going to get, if you want to raise your kids and them to turn out right, get this book. Uh, um, I, I made a lady mad one time because uh, uh, they were. I was listening to the uh, fella who does uh, focus on the family. Dot, what's his name? Uh, hmm. Yeah, and he was talking about some stuff, and I didn't agree with him. And I said, "He's don't buy his book. He's an idiot." Now, see that. That don't go over well because he's been to college. He's wrote a book. And you know what I was doing? I was delivering ice cream. <laughs> 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 
You, they, they look at me and say, this guy's a moron. But I'm not trying to sell you no book. Hmm? He was talking about, you know, that homosexuality really is no more serious an offense to God than uh, like uh, if you cheated on your wife. I, I, don't, I don't believe that. God has never destroyed a, co a country for adultery, but he did destroy two of them. Hmm? Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. He did. <clears throat> Look with me in the book of Job. Do you know there are people that will discourage you from having hope? Huh? Hey, Amen. Yep. <laughs> look, look, look at what Now, here's Job lost all of his kids. That's the, you know, I, I wouldn't know what to do if I to lose my kids. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, my brother, this has been over a year ago, his oldest son, his wife, she worked uh, down in Florida, and where she worked, the fellow that was a cook, his wife went out to go somewhere, and she thought their little girl had got in the van, and she ran over that kid. This girl about went crazy. At the funeral, my nephew said that three times she went up to the casket to get this kid out of the casket. Uh, now I know a lot of people are even hard on Job's wife, but you haven't buried ten kids. Uh, you better wait before you hone somebody down until you stepped into their shoes. You say, well, I would never do that. God might give you that opportunity. Hmm? God might let you have the opportunity to know what it feels like. Uh, uh, look what it says. In verse 2, he said, I have heard many such things. Job's talking. Miserable comforters are ye. All through the book of Job, they're talking to him. and They're trying to, they're trying to come to the conclusion that Job was this great, wealthy, wise man and he committed some horrible crime and God killed all of his chi children and stole all of his stuff and left him destitute and you know if you read the first of the book brother Peter this was the amazing part I found they said Job was sitting in the ashes scraping himself and his th three friends were sitting there they sat in the ashes with him but you know what they did here's what they did they sit there and they cannot control their actions to what's happened to this man. Do you understand? Do you understand what you, the damage that you can do to the people that are around you that, you know, they're just barely hanging on by a thread and you have to come and attack them? Brother, I want to tell you, that's a horrible, horrible way to live your life. I want to tell you, when somebody goes through hard times and there's uh, sorrow in their life, you need to put an arm around them and draw them up and hug them and pray for them. Don't be out of control saying, well, you know what, you've, you know, you used to give all this information out. What, 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 what are you doing now? What's what nobody wants you? Even his family turned on him. Uh, he said, see, they don't only lose control, but they don't even have no comfort. You know what some people need? I'll tell you what all of us need. We need somebody to comfort us. Say, so it's going to be all right. You may not be going through something right now, but like, like Brother Josh said today, you might be the next one. Huh? Listen. But there's friends. One thing they had to do, they had to correct him. You know what? Sometimes, friend, I, I understand we all need correction. Sometimes we just need somebody to say, you know what? God loves you. And He does. He loves you more than you could even imagine. I'll, I'll just read these to you and I'm done. Out of the book of Psalms, we find who directs our hope, and it's God. God does. He is our hope. Look, look, look at, and I'll just read these to you. 
Psalms 31, 24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Psalms 38, 15. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord, my God. Does that sound like somebody who's grinding you in the, in the, in the dust of all your sorrow and in in all of your troubles and all of your trials? That ain't, what that, that ain't what he's doing. You know what he's doing? He's saying, you know what? You need to listen to what's going on around you. There's a lot of people hurting today. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, there's times when people think, well, you know, they need to be told what to, yeah, and sometimes they just need a hug. You know what God does? He's directing us. God will whip. Let him do it. I, I've got two children. I usually done the whipping. I didn't let the people at church whip them. Hmm? I, I usually didn't whip my children downstairs when we had a basement. It was on the way. I didn't want them to forget what they was getting a whipping for. Hmm? Don't worry about it. God will take care of it. I want to tell you something. What we need in this year to come, we need a good dose of hope. When all this craziness... Now I want to say this to you. I got good news. There's more bad news to come. <laughs> There's more bad news to come. It, this ain't it. It's going to keep getting worse. But I want to tell you this. And all of that, we're the only ones that's got anything... We got any, Ain't nobody got nothing to hope for because they're putting... Their, they think that if we could get Trump back in there... Well, God help us. You know, that ain't your hope, my friend. If it is, you, you, need, you need help from God. Folks, I want to tell you something. Hope in the Lord. Let's pray. Brother Josh, you come. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. God, in this new year that comes, we don't know what's up around the corner. We don't even know if we'll make it home tonight. But God, I pray, Lord, that we put our trust and hope in you. Father, I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.